Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a closer look at thermodynamic processes. There are different types of processes depending upon which of the state variables change and don't change. For example, we have what we call the isobaric process. Now baric means pressure and iso means one or the same. So when the pressure remains constant, we call it an isobaric process, which means that the pressure in state one, or the initial state, equals the pressure in state two, or the final state. If the volume remains constant, we call it an isochoric process. Now more recently, in most textbooks, they're beginning to change the word isochoric to isovolumetric, because people understand the word volume, so when they see isovolumetric, they know the volume isn't changing, and quite often the student is confused about the word coric, but it does mean single volume. Isothermal process means the temperature remains constant. So the initial temperature, the state one temperature, equals the state two temperature, which means that the other two state variables could change. So we have those three processes, each one representing a change in the state where either the pressure, the volume, or the temperature remains constant. Then we have a fourth process called the adiabatic process. In that process, none of the variables P, V, or T remain constant. But what is different here is that no heat ex is exchanged, like if you have an adiabatic wall, Q means Q is zero means that there's no heat being exchanged, and so we know that as being the adiabatic process. Then we either have what we call a reversible process or an irreversible process. A reversible process means that no energy is lost due to dissipative forces or friction. It's kind of a fictitious thing. We call it an idealized process, just like in mechanical physics, we sometimes, or quite often, ignore wind resistance. And we know, of course, in the real world, there's no such a thing. So we do idealize the processes just to make it easier. So we do talk a lot about reversible processes, but in the real world, there is not such a thing. All natural processes are irreversible, meaning that there's some laws of energy in the process. An irreversible process includes dissipation of energy, so we have to account for that if we're going to call it an irreversible process. Something to keep in mind that, an that all reversible processes are quasi-static, so we can go through it from one small change to the next small change to the next small change and account for a change in the pressure, the volume, and the temperature from each instant to the next instant. But not all quasi-static processes are reversible. For example, we could have a small leak in the container such that a small amount of gas is leaking out of very slow and at a very steady state. And so we can account for that as each instant there's a small amount of gas escaping, but then when we want to reverse the process, we have no way of putting that gas back into the container. So therefore, it's not reversible, but we can look at it from a quasi-static point of view. So that's what we mean by the different thermodynamic processes. Again, good to put that into memory so that we have a much easier time understanding the more complicated systems and processes that we'll encounter as we continue with this thermodynamic process or the thermodynamic lectures, I should call them. That's how we know.